so we spoke, and so we spoke that load of castamia. We've just watched The Lion and the Rose, the second episode from season four of Game of Thrones. The king is dead. The Iron Throne is empty for now. A toast to the memory of King Joffrey Baratheon, late ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, former King of the Andals and of the First Men. Love him or hate him, he was undeniably one of the greatest bad guys of modern times. Yes, now the rains we pour us home, and now the soul to hear. Tonight, we gather the guilty, determine the motives and examine the evidence as we point the finger at the lead suspects of the murder of King Joffrey, at a ceremony that will be forever marked in history and in our hearts as the Purple Wedding. I'm Jamie East and I have the honour of being your presiding judge. I'm joined by Rachel Paris, who will perform the duty of Crown Prosecutor. And we call on you, yes you, our viewers, to act as jury and tweet us who you think the guilty individuals are in the murder trial of King Joffrey Baratheon. Also on Thronecast, we bring you a sneak peek at next week's episode. We go behind the scenes with the cast and crew. We meet the boy with the magic touch, Isaac Hempstead Wright, a.k.a. Bran Stark. We most definitely talk about the poisons of Westeros with our superfans Elio and Linda. And Sir Dontos the Red, Mr Tony Way is here for a cup of wine or five. That's all on Thronecast, your official fan show for Game of Thrones on Sky Atlantic HD, the home of Thrones. Now let's reveal our first suspect. Master of coin, cupbearer to the deceased at the royal wedding. There's only blooming Tyrion Lannister. What's his relationship like with the victim? Very turbulent, yeah. basically. They're always scrapping. Joffrey constantly taunting him about his stature, yeah. about his behaviour, his well, fighting. Tyrion slapped uh, Joffrey at one point. Tyrion held the power over Joffrey because he knew about his cowardness at the Battle of Blackwater. Yes, so that exactly. Was... That was always going to have to be sorted out. Uh, but what was his motive? One of them might be jealousy. Tywin gave the sword to Joffrey instead of to his other son, which uh, seemed a bit of a... And also made him motive. get rid of his one true love. What's the evidence, though? He well, was... pretty much everyone at the wedding saw him pick up that cup and hand it to Joffrey. Uh, we are assuming, though, that the wine killed Joffrey. It could have mm. been something else. could have been that big pie. Those birds were not cooked. Undercooked poultry is very, very bad for mm. you, as we all know. Uh, but in his defence... He was framed, wasn't he? Surely framed, because he's a clever guy, Tyrion. You know, he wouldn't incriminate himself like that, surely. Well, we hope not. Uh, but if you think Tyrion did do it, tweet Tyrion to at Thronecast and let us know. Royal guest, the Red Viper of Dawn. The man I like to think models himself on me just a little bit. It's <laughs> Prince Oberyn Martell. Stop yes. laughing. <laughs> uh, so he wants revenge against the Lannisters. He's told everybody. He's told everyone. He came in and he said it's not just a Lannister who always pays their debts. This is true. This is true. What's his motive, though? He, he wants revenge. And revenge he's made was that the mountain, wasn't it? It's the mountain on the orders of Tywin, crucially, who uh, killed his sister. If you were going to hurt, if you wanted to hurt Tywin, Joffrey, I don't think, is the, is the mm. one that you would go for. Maybe that's something in his defence, yeah. See, uh, the evidence, though. Well, he comes from Dawn, which yeah. is known for using poisons and um, especially the venom of snakes. So okay. that's something that he would have knowledge of. OK, if you see any snakes slithering around in the next couple of episodes, then maybe, uh, maybe the light will shine on him a bit brighter. But in his defence, he's hiding in plain sight, right? Would you walk around making idle threats? Would you, would you be that arrogant? He would. If you think Oberyn did it, tweet Oberyn to at Thronecast and let us know. It's only the Queen of Westeros herself, Marjorie Tyrell. OK. What, what are their, what's their relationship like? So, just got married, and yeah. I think she's probably just using him for political power. Surely yeah. she can't really love him. No, well, the thought of the wedding... You know, she was, she was going to have to go and have sex with Joffrey. Oh, gross! I'd Don't have, say I'd that! Have, I'd have poisoned him just for that very, Ooh. very reason. Uh, motive? She wants to promote the house of Tyrell, certainly. And also, I think she probably knew that she was in danger just being close to him. He yeah, was well, mental. She, she's seen you know. plenty of evidence. And also, uh, we saw Elena talking with Tywin. They've got no money. They know that the Lannisters are skint, she, yep. as, as, she, as she pointed out, because they paid for all the food and, and the wine. wine. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, in her defence, well, it's pretty flimsy. It is. I mean... She doesn't look like she's got the chops to do it. 
No. Uh, in her defence, she looked very upset, uh, if that's a defence. But then she's the supreme actress, yeah. really. Uh, she's amazing. If Westeros had a Rada, she went to it. She's always acting. She's always got a front on. I'm not convinced myself. But uh, I'm sure that people will let me know if, uh, if I'm wrong. If you think Marjorie did it, please tweet Marjorie to at Thronecast and give me a slap on the wrist. Wow, it's former wife of the deceased Lady Sansa Stark. Now, Sansa, Joffrey's relationship, probably second only to Tyrion's for being the worst. She must hate him so much. Yeah. He's done everything to hurt her. He snubbed her in terms of marriage. Yeah. He ordered the Kingsguard to beat her. Yeah. He, he um, ordered the beheading of, of her dad. And then made her look at it. Yeah. And also uh, general horribleness to her throughout her time in King's Landing. Yeah, precisely. Uh, motive? Take your pick. She's got so many. Yeah. Revenge, revenge, revenge. Revenge, revenge, uh, revenge. And also personal safety, maybe. Evidence. Right, this is an interesting one. Mm. So the only evidence that, we, that we've got so far was when... Um, she bent down to pick up the cup. Yes, and handed it to Tyrion, who handed it to Joffrey. But that relied on Joffrey kicking that cup at that oh. precise time, at that precise angle. So, yeah. well, if you think Sansa did it, if you're that way inclined, tweet Sansa and let us know, at Thronecast. Wow, OK, this is an interesting one. It's mother of the deceased, former Queen Cersei Lannister. This okay. would be profound if she did this. Yeah. A loving mother, and I think even though she knows that he's out of control... She's created a monster. That's what yeah. happens when you have incest, by the way. So yeah. avoid it if you Stay can. Stay clear. I think for the good of the house, he had to go. Yeah. And she values Lannister reputation and Lannister power more than anything. Yeah, OK, but evidence. Now, this is quite a crucial one, because as far as I remember, she's one of the few people that we know has had poison in her possession. If you think yes. back to the Battle of Blackwater, mm -hmm. she was about to poison Tommen just to put him out of his misery, and I think she was probably then going to take it herself. And I can't remember, you guys watching might be able to let me know if I'm wrong, I can't remember if she gave it back or destroyed it or anything, but as far as I'm aware, she's still got that, that poison on her possession. Well, we saw in last week's episode, uh, she mentioned in her chamber about uh, sorting out that other matter. Oh. I mean, that was never that was never elaborated on. So there's there are lots of interesting strands all pointing to Cersei. Mm -hmm. It would be massive mm -hmm. if it turns out to be her. But in her defence, she is his mum, after all. Would she? I don't think that she would, but... Uh, I think she would. I think she's crazy batshit. But if you think Cersei did it as well, uh, if you think a mother would kill their own child in the name of Game of Thrones, this is Game of Thrones, after all. Tweet Cersei to at Thronecast. Grandfather of the deceased, Hand of the King, Lord of Casterly Rock himself, it's Tywin Lannister. Have we saved the best till last? I think possibly we have. So, politically, he has things to gain and he has things to lose yeah. from Joffrey dying. This is true. He tried to control him. Uh, and he did do for a while, puppet. didn't yeah, he? Yeah, very successfully. Um, as his hand, he managed to rule King's Landing and the realm, really. Yeah. But I think Joffrey's a bit out of control now. In his defence, though, not really his style. I think he'd want to look Joffrey in the eye before he... Uh, do tweet the name of the person who you think did do it to our throne cast. And next week we'll see if there's any more evidence to add to our inquiries and share the top five guilty suspects with you. In another great storyline this week, Bran Stark has travelled north of the Wall with Hodor, Mira and Jojen, and he's on the verge of discovering some incredible new powers. We know that Bran is a warg and that he can see through the eyes of animals. But in this episode, when he touched the weirwood tree, he had an incredible, mysterious vision. I was lucky enough to meet Bran and talk about his continuing magical journey. Isaac Hempstead Wright, Bran Stark, thank you so much for joining us on yeah, Thronecast. My pleasure, it's good to be back. We're gradually learning more about Bran's magical abilities. Can you tell us a little bit more about his ability to enter the mind of animals? So, Bran has always had, you know, a special connection to his wolves ever since the very start. Mm. Throughout the seasons, he's gradually begun to understand it and to actually utilise it mm. rather than just sort of letting it take control of him. And Jojen is crucial in that, in sort of helping him to understand it because he's been through the same thing. And essentially what it is, is, is Bran can go into other creatures, whether that be a wolf or whether it be Hodor, um, which we see in season three. Do you know if Bran can do that with other people as well? Well, 
Yeah, that's a good point, because if he could, he could rule the world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we know that Bran has got quite a few magical powers. Mm. They're sort of mounting up <laughs> yeah. there. And one of the new ones that we see more of is green sight. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? So green sight is the idea of, you know, being able to see through the weirwood trees. And Bran seems to have this, this connection with being able to sort of morph into things or, you know, go into different animals or trees or human beings. What's really great about green sight is you can look in the future, you can look in the past through any tree, you through the eyes of the tree. Um, and I reckon that could be hugely useful to Bran, yeah. not only to be able to, you know, check what's happening in the future or the football scores, <laughs> but, um, you know, to look back. And, and we see in this season him, him touching the tree, and that really is the sort of the start of um, this, this whole new aspect of, of green sight. From that moment on, Brian knows exactly where he's going. It's almost as if he's got like the longitude and latitude coordinates from this magical tree. You know, he's 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 ha he's had distractions previously to try and sort of guide him away, um, but this is the absolute final. I know exactly where I'm going. Look for me. There's more from that interview online, so visit sky.com forward slash thrones for all of our extra content, extended interviews and more. Stay with us because after the break we go behind the scenes of Game of Thrones. We talk about the poisons of Westeros with superfans Elio and Linda. We bring you a sneak peek of next week's episode. And the murder trial of King Joffrey continues. Call next suspect. So don't toss the red of House Hollard! So don't toss the red of House Hollard! Here I am! I am sorry, Your Grace. And David's apologies. Are you drunk? Nope. Welcome back to your official fan show for Game of Thrones on Sky Atlantic HD, the home of Thrones. We're here after every single episode, and things really are starting to get interesting. Joffrey is dead. His purple reign is over. What a tune. Here's what some of his Westerosi colleagues had to say about the death of their king. Ooh, well, it opens up the whole can of worms, doesn't it? He was such a little bully, Joffrey. Well, it's about time the dude's gone, because he's not supposed to be there in the first place. I'm sure the Hound was thinking, Christ, I would love to kill the little shit. I'm always for, you know, wiping out the fascists. Could have gone and be killed by steel rather than poison, but he's dead. Joffrey's dead, no big deal, one step closer. Next in the murder trial of King Joffrey. Sir Gontos, the Red of House Holland! Here I am. Here I am. Sorry, Doug Grace. My deepest apologies. Tony Way, welcome Hello. to Thronecast. Cheers. Cheers. Chin chin, Cheers. bottoms up. Mm. No. No, I could have. That. We'll give that a miss. Uh, so Dontos is back quite suddenly, uh, and he seemingly wants to help out Sansa. Yeah. I'm finding that a bit suspicious, so we're going to put you on trial. OK? okay. So remind us, first of all, what is Sir Dontos the Red's story? Um, Sir Dontos was a knight. He still is a knight, officially, yeah. but he's not had a very good life. I think all of his family were wiped out at some point. Aww. He's sort of knocked about King's Landing getting drunk ever since. Don't blame him. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's not a great time. I think he goes in for the occasional tournament, which he loses. But what's, what's Sir Dontos' relationship to the victim, to Joffrey's victim? He, he hates him? Um, I don't think he likes him, for certain. I don't... He's quite a nice guy, Sir Dontos, yeah. on the whole. You know, he just wants to be left alone. I think behind the scenes, what you don't see is Joffrey probably picks on him every time he notices. Is this like a, a, behind the scenes, actually, whilst you're yeah, this is Jack doing Jack this Lee's to me. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible, pinching you and it's horrible to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that behind the scenes, that's probably what's happening. He's his fool. He probably just... I think Joffrey's always had that thing of whoever catches his eye. Yeah. That's it. OK, you. I'm yeah. picking on you today. I think uh, poor old Sir Dontos gets that quite a bit. In your defence, is Sir Dontos even capable of pulling off a kind of detailed murder? I don't think he could. And I guess he probably hasn't got that many useful contacts in the court. So he's not exactly a social climber. But, but you only um, need one. Yeah, exactly. You know, there are other people that don't like Joffrey. 
to. He's got the ear of Sansa, for one thing. Exactly. OK, well, let's break from the character assassination. <laughs> we'll let you off. We'll let you off the hook. We're not... The fans haven't let you off the hook yet. You're still on trial, <laughs> Sunshine, as far as the viewers go. But for us, we will talk to Tony now, rather than oh, Sir Doctor. Okay. Um, how, how did it come about? How did you, when did you get the call and find out that you were going to be working on Game of Thrones? Um, I, was, I was about halfway through season one watching. I think it had probably just finished, but I was catching up. Um, and I got the call to go in for it, which is very exciting. And I went for a casting. I have a grape too. I'm going to um, um, I'm going to talk with my mouth full. Um, I went in for the casting. They said, be drunk, be loud, be an idiot. Yeah, and I'm very good at doing very good at, very good at being an idiot, yeah. being loud, being pissed. Um, and I was very excited that I might get to work with Sean Bean, who I love. Oh, yeah. Um, really yeah. excited, because I was only halfway through season one. Yeah. Got the part, told my friend, which I probably wasn't supposed to do, but yeah. I said, Look, I think I'm going to be in Game of Thrones. Me and to. Sean, we're going to be like that. Like, genuinely. I think it's, he was all working out, I'm going to be I've in... I've written a play King, for him. We're going to be in King's Landing, he's there now. And he went, no, no. Yeah, you've, you've, I said, what do you mean, does he leave? He went, well, just, a bit of him just, leaves. Just, just <laughs> the other rest yeah. of him stays. Part of him, he's gone for good. Yeah, yeah, but that's how it came about, anyway. But you, know. you, but you came in in series two, mm. where, where it, was, it was already established as, as a, a kind of machine, a success machine. It was mm. a huge undertaking. Yeah, I was literally airdropped into that, pretty yeah. much. I literally got off the airplane, went straight to rehearsal there, and then the next wow. morning, there I was, before we covered... Quite an intimidating set as well, that Yeah, that it's scene. a bit. I had no idea what to expect. I filmed nothing, you know. I'd done a little bit maybe in Belfast, but nothing major. That big scene of the name day, that was all in Dubrovnik. Oh. It was on um, a genuine fortress, which is right in the old city, which is... Is just if you look at King's Landing, that is what Dubrovnik looks like. Wow, it's extraordinary. Um, they just clear away, you know, mobile yeah, can phones. Can we do and... next next week's episode from Dubrovnik? Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> we are in Dubrovnik. Of Don't course we are. Sorry, <laughs> Tony White. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. What a, you. You're a wonderful drunken fool, <laughs> both in character and in real life. Cheers. In just a moment, we talk about the poisons of Westeros with our super fans, Elio and Linda. But first, let's take a look behind the scenes of Game of Thrones. I'm the Kingslayer. When people find out it can't slay a pigeon. Train then. Learn to fight with your other hand. With whom? You? Men talk. As soon as someone discovers I can't fight, he'll tell everyone. You need a proper, discreet swordsman. As it happens, I have just the one. Tyrion gets Jamie sword fighting lessons with his sellsword brawn. You know, I, I think he really is sympathetic without being patronizing. Everybody else is sort of giving him the sad face. And Tyrion is a realist, and he's dealt with being in the underdog his whole life, so he understands what Jamie's going through. Because they have a bit more in common now. The fact is, he's been fighting his whole life, and even though it's his left hand, he can still get by. But it's, it's the, the quick moves that are a little trickier. He's just not as good as he was. What's fun about this is Bronn is a street fighter. He doesn't care about the rules, he cares about winning, which is, you know, smart. Bron isn't a pretty fighter like Jamie, and I think that's part of what Bron has to teach him, is that if he wants to win, he, he, he doesn't have to look pretty, and it's better not to in, in uh, most cases. I mean, the first time they have the spar, he attacks before Jamie's ready, and that kind of is really annoying, but of course it makes sense, you know, because that's what you do. You, you look for the weaknesses, and, and that's really helpful. As we've seen this week, not all acts of war are dealt by armies and soldiers. Poison can also play a major part on the battlefield. Sure can. Elio and Linda from Westeros.org might be able to help with our inquiries in the King Joffrey murder trials. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Who has the knowledge to make an effective and deadly poison? Well, we've had uh, Maester Pycelle say at one point that poison is the weapon of women, cravens and eunuchs. So that might ah. say something about who would use it, but ah. who would make them? Who would make it? Uh, there's lots of people who know. Uh, Grand Maester Pycelle, for example, could be one. The Maesters of the Citadel are renowned for their arts of uh, healing, and if you know how to heal a body, you also know how to kill someone. The this is uh, true. Faithless Men of Bravos, as well, the, the infamous assassins, and you also have people like the Alchemists of Lys who have been known to cook up all sorts of poisons over the centuries. Where else in the series so far on TV have we seen poisons being used? Maester Crescent attempted to poison Melisandre. And it and didn't go well for him, did it? No, it did not go well for him. He ended up um, having to drink it himself, and that was not good for his health. And then you had, of course, starting from the start of the series, John Oren, the former Hand of the King, and 
you know, foster father to Ned Stark and Robert, he died of uh, poison. The, the tears of Lys is the speculation as to what poison was used then. We've heard about different types of poison throughout the series. Do we think that we've seen the, the, the particular poison that killed Joffrey? Do we think we've seen that before? Because uh, a lot of it seems to start from a single trickle of blood down the nose and then kind of goes downhill from there. If you think back to the second season when we are introduced to Stannis Baratheon in his court and uh, Maester Crescent drops that little sort of white pebble or crystal into the cup of wine and drinks it, uh, the first thing that starts is his nose starts bleeding. Uh, and yeah. sort of the, the life is sort of drains out of him. Do we think that Joffrey was killed by the tears of Lys as well? Well, probably not the tears of Lys. It does seem to have more of a, a strangling effect. He might have seemed like he was a little short of breath at least, but uh, there may, maybe is a matter of dosage, uh, more of a okay. dosage at, in, used on Joffrey. I've got something to show you. Wait there, wait there, look. You remember last week uh, we were talking about obsidian? I ask and the production crew deliver these are actual obsidian arrowheads. How about that? Rachel, you should ask for uh, Oberyn Martell to be delivered with nothing but a bottle of baby oil. Don't start on me. Thank you very, very much. Can we speak to you next week? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it for this week. You can go online now to see more of our exclusive interview with Isaac Hempstead Wright. And there's an extended interview with last week's guest, John Bradley. Go to sky.com forward slash thrones. Game of Thrones, of course, returns next week to Sky Atlantic on Monday night from 9 pm. In the meantime, you can rewatch seasons one to three on demand or with Sky Go. We want to know who you think is responsible for the murder of Joffrey. Tweet the character's name to at Thronecast and next week we'll reveal our top five suspects. Uh, now, those of you that don't want to see an awesome teaser of next week's episode, Breaker of Change, because we know some of you don't want any spoilers, look away now. Thank you! You did this! Whoever killed the king wanted me to lose my head for it. Your circumstances have improved markedly. But I would have been the queen. Man says all he needs to crush us, he just doesn't know it yet. Who's gonna protect you at Castle Black? I've never heard of visions and prophecies winning a war. I'm running out of time. I have something to say to the people of Marine. Nigel!